I think I've worked out why my deadlift is so far ahead of my squat. Um, it's got everything to do with how I squat. ATG squatting is very heavy on your lower back. The angle which your hip needs to get to uh, is very, very acute. So there's a lot of force on your lower back. Especially the way I squat and my leverages are. And the fact that I squat with no heels, so flat shoes. And the fact that I lean over a little bit. It's quite heavy on the lower back. I'm going full ATG, all the way full squats, with that bit of a lean. Uh, and that is basically, over the course of this two-year, two-and-a-half-year journey, has strengthened my lower back more than any other body part. Uh, I have found uh, in this journey that I'm very good in the eccentric portion. Uh, I bounce out of the hole quite well. And then I get to kind of that halfway, which is pretty much a universal sticking point when it comes to squats. I get to that point and I fail. Uh, and so then I look like I can't grind through and I end up dumping the weight, even though up until that point, I look very comfortable with the weight on my shoulders. Uh, I was listening to Louis Simmons today in one of his podcasts, and he talked about this very thing. And it clicked to me because obviously he has a lot of respect in the game and I respect what he has to say and you know, you know, devoted a whole lifetime in this game. And so he said, Olympic weightlifters have really strong lower backs because they spend so much time in that ATG position. And I thought to myself, maybe that explains why my deadlift is so far ahead. I'm very strong. And, you know, in, in relative to everything else, uh, I feel like if I can get that thing off the ground, I will be able to finish that uh, deadlift rep with ease. And this is why you guys always tell me, man, you can do a, you can lower your, you know, one rep max on the deadlift like it's nothing. And it seems like it's nothing because I'm so confident in that top portion of the lift. It's like all lower back, especially around the knee. Around When the bar is going around the knee in the deadlift, that's the furthest point away from your hip, basically. That's where the bar is. So there's the biggest moment arm between the bar and your hip at that knee level, when the bar's at that knee level. And I'm quite comfortable in that position. I feel like my back is strong. And so I'm, I'm kind of sitting back and I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe this is, explain, this is explaining why I'm so kind of more advanced in the deadlift, even though my leverages don't, you know, show that. And my leverages are quite poor when it comes to deadlifting. I start very bent over. But my lower back has been conditioned with this repetitive, repetitive squatting daily for almost three years now. Uh, I just thought that was interesting, a bit of a connection. And obviously... Uh, I've the other, so I know that for a fact now, I'm pretty confident I've worked that bit out, uh, that I've got a strong lower back and it likes to take over every chance it gets. And this is why I, I tend to lean over in squatting, I think. Um, but it certainly explains one possibility why my deadlift is so far ahead because I ETG squat. Now, one other thing that I learned in this journey without a doubt, especially in the setup that I'm doing right now with the squat every day for the last two and a half years, is that every single time I include posterior chain work, whether it be RDLs, good mornings, GHDs, 45 hypers, whatever it is, I flourish. I literally feel I'm light on my feet. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And then it's been happening over and over again. Every year that I kind of do a review, I always talk about the most successful periods are when I do a lot of posterior chain work. So what you guys are seeing here is sumo deadlifts. Now, why am I going back to sumo deadlifts? It's purely based on what Louis said today uh, in the podcast that I watched today. The podcast is probably six months or nine months old. Uh, it's called, I think, podcast number 60-odd. It's called The Deadlift. It's him and, and I think the fellow's name is Tom. Uh, he's another person in, in the West Side who kind of manages the whole gym, um, but they were having a conversation and Tom was throwing all these questions at him. And so one of the things that Louis said when it comes to lower back training um, is he swears by good mornings and he said a large portion of his training was done box squatting. That was one thing that he loved and we all know that. And the other thing was good mornings. Those two things kind of built him. But another thing that he loved to do when it comes to lower back training, he kept saying lower back because he had a lot of trouble with his lower back, snapped it a few times. He said that stiff-legged sumo deadlifts off the ground. He said that builds your lower back like nothing. And so today I thought, okay, let's let's try this. 
So I've come in, I put 100 kilos and I did 10 sets of five with that. And initially I was trying to use stiff uh, legs completely, but I found it, I was having trouble keeping my uh, back flat. So I kind of started using more soft knee kind of approach, which ended up looking like a sumo anyway. Uh, but I was definitely not trying to engage my quads. I was not trying to use my leg drive. I was purely trying to hip hinge in a sumo position. And I could tell you, I felt my lats, I felt my mid back and my lower back. Uh, so he's right. It's hell of a builder for the lower back. So I'm kind of drumming up uh, these exercises every single day now. I feel like I'm going to do some posterior chain work. So yesterday I did good mornings and I went heavy with 80 kilos. Today I kind of went light with these sumos. Every single day that I come into the gym, I want to do some sort of posterior chain work. I love good mornings. They make me feel unreal. So right now I've got good mornings and then sumos the following day. I don't know if sumos are going to stick around, but I'm definitely continuously thinking about hamstrings, glutes, erectors, adductors. Everything that's involved in a hip hinge seems to make me feel good. Uh, and, you know, every, the more I watch Louis talk about these topics, the more I'm more convinced that this is what, what needs to happen. Um, and, you know, a lot of these things don't have to be done to max effort. So today, these sumos, you know, I didn't do them to a, to a max effort. I just basically, in a way, I don't know if you call that, a, he would call that a speed day or whatever. The way I like to think about it, I just want to move through that motion, through that movement, and teach my body how to hip hinge in that wide stance position. And I can tell you, it was a weird sensation. I felt like my lats were engaging so hard because uh, I felt like I was so far ahead of the bar. Uh, whereas, you know, with the convention, I feel like I can sit a little bit back. And anyway, I'm no expert on the sumo at all, but I like what it did to my body. Uh, I really do. So I've got good mornings. I've got these sumos. I'm also doing uh, leg curls as well. You know, I didn't record them yesterday, but I'm doing that. Seems like 80% of my exercise that I'm doing right now is all got to do with posterior chain. Definitely feels like that in terms of how much training time I spend doing that. And it makes me feel good. And, you know, last night I went back to my old journal training log and I was looking at, you know, all the points that I started doing good mornings or RDLs or anything like that in the posterior chain. And I always would write kind of subjectively. There's a comment somewhere around those periods where I say, I feel it feels good. I'm onto something or something along those lines. It's just always made me feel good. Uh, when you think about it, the ATG position, if you can get through that ATG position with confidence and you can carry some speed into that universal, you know, 90 degree knee bend, universal sticking point for the squat, then you're going to be in better stead. If you completely slow down, then you're in trouble. Uh, this is why I've, I keep saying to you guys, you know, you guys asking me, what's, what, what made you deadlift so much? Man, now I feel good because I have Louis saying the same thing. It's the damn squats, man. If you want to improve your deadlift, one way, if you ask me, is to just squat ATG, man. Squat ATG. Uh, it builds that lower back and, you know, lower back needs to be strong. Let's be honest. No matter how you position yourself, the lower back needs to be strong. Uh, my problem now is building that off the floor strength. I feel like that's holding me back. I feel like I could do 280 in the deadlift if I could just get that bar moving a little bit quicker off the ground. Um, because I feel like if I can get that to mid shin, you know, the, the upper third of the shin, I, I'm locking that out. Like I've never, ever had trouble locking a weight out in the deadlift. Uh, to me, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, some of the people... I mean, I haven't thought about this for a long time, but for some people that are struggling at the top portion of the deadlift, maybe they squat to parallel. So they've got really strong quads because, you know, at that parallel position of the of the squat, that's what's kind of like heavy, heavy quads. So they've got really good quads, so they kind of explode off the deadlift, but then they run out of steam and they, they have trouble locking up at the top end when it comes to the deadlift. Whereas I'm kind of in reverse, I squat ATG, so I've kind of developed the adductors, developed the lower back, and so for me, you know, it's a joke at the top end, but I don't really have that maybe quad or that stability to push. You know, it's that 90 degree knee angle, which kind of mimics that universal uh, sticking point in the squat. And that kind of also mimics the position that we are, that we find ourselves in at the start of a deadlift. So th that kind of knee angle, hip angle, 
Uh, obviously, it depends on your leverages, but that's me. That position, if you if you think about a side profile of me deadlifting off the ground, that initial push and the middle of the squat, they're kind of similar positions in terms of the angles. Uh, so that's kind of me. But you know, you know, as deadlifts, as as uh, Louis said, you know, it is what it is, man. Some of us are always going to have weakness of the floor just because the way we are. You know, we got certain lengths in our arms, legs, shin bones, all this sort of stuff. So maybe I will never be strong off the ground. It's always going to be my sticking point. And that's cool. You know, it kind of makes it easier for me because I, when I work out what works for me, I'll know no matter what I do, it's always going to be that thing. Man. I just got to hammer that thing. Um, and in a way, you know, a lot of us don't like to think about this and we don't want to know this, but in a way, once you kind of find that particular weakness, uh, you gotta make, you gotta just fall in love with that particular exercise that addresses that weakness. So our weaknesses dictate what you know where we should spend our recovery points. It's not sexy, you know. I wish I wish I could just squat day and night, and everything else would fix itself. But it seems it's not that way. It seems, you know, God dictates where you should spend your recovery points. You know, you call it God, call it evolution, call it mom and dad, call it whatever you want. But, you know, my arms are not going to grow any longer and my, my shin bone is not going to get any different size and femur and whatever. It is what it is. It will be interesting to like, you know, if, if I work out exactly how to address that initial, you know, push off the floor, whether it's this upper back stuff that I'm doing with the with the pull-ups, uh, whether it's this huge amount of posterior chain work, maybe eventually I start pulling you know 260 of the floor like it's nothing and then eventually i start slowing out the top that's going to be interesting for me but the way i start my deadlifts uh i would find it very hard to believe that the floor is ever going to be a strong point for me just because that's a start so bent over and and you know you guys always comment man you you, you turn your feet out your feet are so close together you know a lot of these decisions were made because my proportions i'm trying to make sure that my arms are completely vertical, so I don't lose any millimeters in terms of, you know, my reach to the bar. Because obviously, if I go further along the bar to the side, then I start losing length of the arm because I'm going out more. So that's the first thing I think to myself. My arms need to go straight down. And then I just got to work out where the legs go, basically. And so for me, I need to have some sort of external rotation. So I put my heels quite close together, turn my feet out a little bit. And then I put my bar maybe a little... It's a little bit ahead of the middle of the foot just because I'm trying to bias that quad action so I can get the bar moving because if I have that bar as the textbook says as, as everyone teaches it right up against my shin bone or maybe like an inch away from the shin bone like right over my midfoot then it becomes a freaking stiff-legged pull for me man literally no quad engagement at all and you know the first thing that happens is my knees go straight and then it's a good old hip inch all the way to the top of the Mount Everest. That's what it feels like to me. Um, so even though, you know, somebody is going to teach you day one how to deadlift properly, ultimately you're going to have to fine tune that maybe a millimeter here, a millimeter there to, to, you know, work with the leverages that you have. And it seems to me, especially when I look at the general and I listen to people that are much smarter than me in this topic, Seems to me every single time I do some sort of posterior chain work, I feel stronger. I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And that's probably as a result because I do a lot of pushing with the squats every single day. So it only makes sense that I have to do pulling to a, to a large degree and then plus, plus, plus more large degree because of the proportions that I've been born with. Uh, it's just the way it is. But, you know, I've kind of gotten to a stage now where I'm not thinking about coming into a training session and be like, oh, I really want to do a big squat routine because that's what I want to do. I come in and I'm like, okay, where's this puzzle? Where's the missing piece of that puzzle? Uh-huh, okay, I reckon it's the hamstrings, it's the glutes, it's the lower back. Let's do good mornings. That's literally what I'm thinking about. And that fun that I might have had doing a pin, pin squat, that fun is being delayed when I see the results on the bar when I address that missing puzzle piece that piece of the puzzle that's kind of how i'm piecing everything together uh the feedback the immediate feedback with lat work hamstring work good mornings all that stuff lower back it feels good man my squats feel so much better in their bottom position after doing good mornings after doing these bent over sumos i feel just 
this is what is going to make me stronger. It's really weird. Like you would think doing front squats, doing high bar back squats, well, you would think, okay, you need to do belt squats. You need to do lunges. You need to do Bulgarian split squats, quads, 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 quads. But it's not because when you're going to ATG, you first got to go to ATG, man, before you even get the, 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 the quads involved, you know? That's how I squat. Unless you got dorsiflexion where you send the knee into the next room and it becomes just a freaking vertical squat like Lou and it's all quads from get-go, I get it. But for me, I have more vertical shins when I squat. You know, so I need to send my butt lower uh, and I need to rely more on hip flexion rather than knee flexion, if you will, or more dorsiflexion. Uh, that's how I get to my ATG. Because you need to understand, there's a couple of ways of getting to ATG. There's the guys that have incredible ankle mobility and they have like half of their shin bone ahead of their toes. Those guys, those guys don't have as much hip flexion. They don't because they, they've, they've maxed out their ankles completely. I'm not that guy. I'm the other guy who has maybe the knees, maybe a little bit ahead of the toes, but I've got full hip flexion. My strength comes from hips in the squat rather than the knees or quads. So that's kind of how I think about all these things. Uh, and tomorrow I do good mornings, hip extension. Tomorrow I do RDLs, hip extension. Tomorrow I do GHDs, hypers, all this sort of hip extension work. I feel like I'm stronger in the squat. Why? Well, because that's what I need to do in the squat to squat, ATG. Hip extension, hip flexion, hip extension, hip flexion, hip extension. And this is how my physique is kind of you know, taking a form, a certain type of form, because these are my leverages. If you have really amazing short legs and short femurs and you can, you know, have that perfectly upright squat, maybe you, you spend less time worrying about your glutes and you spend more time worrying about your quads because that's your positioning in the ATG. So it all depends. And it's, all, it's always going to vary who you are and what you are. It's unfortunate because I wish we could be like, oh man, I love Bulgarian split squats. I love, I love lunges. That's what I got to do. Uh, you might want to do that, but you're not going to see the effect on your body because you squat at a, a different type of way. Uh, but it, it all comes with with time and you know trial and error and doing this block, that block, this block. For me, over and over again, man. Like I said, posterior chain, man. That's where it's at. That's that's when I get stronger. That's it for me, guys. Today, some more brainstorming, more thinking, more Louis, <laughs> more West Side thinking. Uh, Thank you, Patreon guys. Thank you, everyone in the comments and Instagram. Um, I'm having a lot of kind of different platforms to kind of get to, so I'm kind of falling behind a little bit. Uh, but you guys are giving me a lot of ideas, and uh, I love going to the comments, as you guys know. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.